Hi, welcome to another video. So, some days back, the DeepSeek V3.1 model launched, and it was pretty good. But we didn't really have much info on what it was supposed to be exactly. At first, it looked like just another point release, but now DeepSeek has finally come out with some pretty detailed updates. Not just about the model itself, but also about some big moves they're making on the hardware side. And trust me, there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. Let's start with the V3.1 model. Basically, what DeepSeek has done is combine both reasoning and non-reasoning capabilities into a single model. If you remember, in the past, they used to split these into two separate versions. So you'd have to pick whether you wanted fast, basic answers, or more complex, step-by-step -step reasoning. With V3.1, you no longer have to make that choice. You get both in one package, and you can actually toggle between think and non-think modes using a button right in their chat app or web interface. That's kind of cool, because it makes the whole experience way more seamless and flexible. You can basically adapt the model to whatever task you have. In API, you still have two endpoints for non-reasoning and reasoning which is fine. This hybrid inference structure is actually a pretty big deal. In non-think mode, the model is optimized for speed and efficiency, so you get quick answers for straightforward tasks. But when you need deeper, multi-step reasoning, like for coding, research, or more complex agent workflows, you just flip over to think mode. DeepSeek claims that with V3.1, their think mode is now more efficient, using fewer tokens to reach an answer, which should help cut down on API costs. That's something I really appreciate, especially if you're running a ton of queries or building products that rely on agentic AI. On top of that, V3.1 brings some serious upgrades to tool calling and agent skills. After post-training, the model is now better at using external tools and handling multi-step agent tasks. For example, in their own benchmarks, DeepSeek is showing big jumps in performance for things like autonomous browsing, complex search, and terminal tasks. If you're into building AI agents that need to interact with APIs, browse the web, or perform software engineering tasks, this is actually quite awesome. The model's ability to handle tool use and function calling has gotten a lot stronger, which is something I've really wanted to see in more open source models. Another improvement is the context window. DeepSeek has bumped it up from 65k tokens to 131k tokens, which is a significant jump. While it's still not quite at the level of some competitors like Quen3 that can handle million token contexts, 128k tokens is still more than enough for the vast majority of real-world use cases. It's great for longer conversations, bigger documents, or multi-turn agent workflows. So, there's that. And for all you developers out there, DeepSeek has open-sourced both the base and instruct-tuned weights for V3.1, which you can grab on Hugging Face. That's a huge plus if you want to run the model locally, fine-tune it, or just experiment with the architecture. Plus, the API now supports Anthropic's format, Strict Function Calling, in beta. And they've made the overall integration process a lot smoother. The pricing structure is also being updated, with new rates and discounts coming in September. So that's worth keeping an eye on if you're considering using their API at scale. Now, here's where things get really interesting. DeepSeek has also announced that they're working on in-house AI chips. This is honestly a massive move, and it's something I didn't expect to see this soon. Up until now, DeepSeek, like almost everyone else in the AI space, has been heavily dependent on NVIDIA GPUs for training their models. 
Their R1 and V3 models, for example, were trained on massive clusters of NVIDIA hardware. But with all the U.S. export restrictions and China's push for AI self-sufficiency, there's been a lot of pressure to move away from imported chips. What DeepSeek has done with V3.1 is optimize it for a new 8-bit floating-point data format called UE8M0FP8. This is specifically designed for soon-to-be-released next-generation domestic chips. They haven't said exactly which chip makers they're partnering with, but the general consensus is that companies like Huawei, Cambricon, and maybe even Hua Hong Semiconductor could be involved. The UE8M0FP8 format is a technical shift that reduces the memory and compute requirements for running large models, making both training and inference faster and cheaper. That's quite awesome, because it means DeepSeek is working closely with local hardware makers to build a truly Chinese AI stack, from the silicon all the way up to the software. But it hasn't all been smooth sailing. DeepSeek actually tried to train their next-gen R2 model entirely on Huawei's Ascend chips, but ran into a bunch of technical issues. Unstable performance, slow chip-to-chip -chip connectivity, and immature software, especially in Huawei's CAN toolkit. Even with Huawei engineers on site, they couldn't manage a single fully successful training run. In the end, they had to revert back to NVIDIA GPUs for training while keeping Ascend hardware for inference. This whole process delayed the R2 launch and made it clear that, while the ambition is there, the domestic chips aren't quite ready to fully replace NVIDIA just yet. And it's not just DeepSeek feeling the heat. The Chinese government has been pushing hard for companies to adopt local hardware, but the reality is that NVIDIA's systems are still more mature and reliable, especially for large-scale AI training. Meanwhile, competitors like Alibaba have taken advantage of these delays. Quen3, for instance, has already integrated some of DeepSeek's core training algorithms and improved on them, showing just how fast the AI ecosystem in China is moving. Still, the fact that DeepSeek V3.1 is already set up for domestic chips means they're betting big on the next wave of Chinese silicon. If these new chips deliver, it could be a huge step for China's AI self-sufficiency and put DeepSeek ahead of the curve. It's a bold move, and it shows they're thinking long-term, not just about what's possible today, but where the whole ecosystem is going. So, to sum it up, DeepSeek V3.1 is a solid upgrade if you care about agentic workflows, tool use, and running on local hardware. The hybrid reasoning, bigger context window, and open weights are all great improvements. The move toward in-house chips could be a game-changer if it pans out, but there are still a lot of challenges to overcome on the hardware side. I mean, I liked it, and I've been using it, which is why I thought to share it with you guys as well. It's not perfect. There are still some limitations, especially around hardware maturity and context length. But overall, it's a pretty impressive step forward for DeepSeek and for the Chinese AI ecosystem in general. Please subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.